Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. T tonight, I wanted to talk about stewardship of finances. Uh, it's it's really important that we have some goals about uh, our finances and how how we use our finances and what we how we earn our money, what we do with our investments, how, uh, mm -hmm. what we do with our uh, money as far as expenses. So uh, I want to talk just in general terms. I know uh, George and I are both economists, but uh, the kingdom of God is different than the worldly uh, system. Uh, <laughs> just minimize that. Sherry's... Uh, Sherry has been fooling with things. Sorry, sorry. For a second, but we're back. And uh, <laughs> what I wanted to say is that uh, it's important what we do with our uh, finances. And God expects us to be good stewards. And uh, I want to talk about money and how, to, how uh, we should use money and what we should do with it, how important it is in a godly life. And, and so I, I won't first uh, just ask you a general question and let you think about it. And that is, what goals do you have about your finances? Uh, and you don't have to, to answer me, but, but think about it and think about uh, your interaction with God on the subject. What, what are your goals? Now, we can have some very general goals about uh, finances, and, and uh, there's a lot of scriptures and I'm particularly focusing on the New Testament, uh, a lot of scriptures that uh, can certainly help guide us in what to do with our finances. And uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 10, 31 says, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And certainly that would be uh, important. <clears throat> Some other verses that we might think of that might impact our, <clears throat> excuse me, impact our life lives uh, and our finances would be uh, Ephesians 2.10 talks about God has prepared works for us. He prepared them mm -hmm. uh, from the foundation of the earth. And so it's good to think in terms of doing what God purposes for us to do. <clears throat> Another verse uh, talks about Philippians 2, uh, 2 verses 3 and 4 talks about don't do anything out of selfish ambition, mm. uh, but value other people higher than yourself. So that's a good one that we could talk about. Um, also, um, Colossians uh, ha has things to say about it. Uh, uh, whatever you do, do all heartily from, from the heart level. <clears throat> and so as we think about what we do with our finances, it, it's not necessarily... Uh, what we do on the outside and external, what other people see about what we do on our finances. You know, there were some Pharisees uh, that they looked very religious and they throw a lot of money into the, into the uh, offering. Uh, but, but God, but the Lord said uh, one time that the woman that just put in a little bit, uh, that she mm -hmm. had given everything she had. So she had actually given more than them. So it does matter. But it matters most about what is in your heart. So those are the things we're going to be focusing on. This is a verse that I like, uh, Luke 16, uh, verse 9. Uh, I, I think this is real important because he's talking about uh, a, a man, a steward, uh, who's dealing with friendships, and he's establishing friendships. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, and then... What it says in the Passion Translation, I don't know if you have ever read the Passion Translation, but it's a new translation, and it's very powerful, and, and it says, uh, what you do with your money, uh, do it to demonstrate your friendship with God. Woo! I like that. Oh, I love that. Woo! Whatever Praise you do God. with your money, do it to demonstrate. Yes! demonstrate your friendship with God. See, it, it was in a passage, they were talking about friendships and establishing friendships that will really uh, receive you in eternity. Well, there's only one person that can receive you in uh, eternity, and that's God. Amen. And so what it's interesting here, it says we're going to stand with those people. We're going to stand with our friends in eternity, and we're going to be in a, an eternal dwelling, but that's 
that's uh, in the presence of God and will stand eternally. And so you, it's important what friends you have here on the earth because those are the friends you will stand with eternally. They're going to be welcoming you into the eternal realm. And uh, so we're, we use our money. This is what the verse says in the Passion Translation. Use the money to demonstrate friendship with God and win friends and bless people. So that's a real good uh, verse to set a goal by. How, how do we... What do we do with our money? Well, what that says was let's let's demonstrate our friendship with God. Let people know yes. that you are a friend of God. Use your money so that they will know no. you're a friend of God and, and use your money to win friends and, and to bless people. And then the last part of the verse talks about, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, oh, let, let me just take something here. Can you explain a little bit more about winning friends? What does that mean? Well, um, how, how do you win friends? Maybe you have to go someplace. Uh, maybe you travel. Uh, Sherry and I spend money, a lot of money and travel uh, to, to minister to people, uh, to have schools, and, to, and, mm -hmm. and we spend a lot of uh, our money that way. Um, and developing... And developing friendships out of it. So it's not just about uh, entertainment, but it's about building relationships. That's what we are about. We build relationships. Mm -hmm. And and many of those people then become our lifelong friends. Uh, and so we build relationships. That, that's a way that well, you Let me can... give you one example. Okay. And that is, uh, we love to give, give the word. And for almost 27 years now, we have we have traveled to Honduras, Central America, and anytime, and most of you know this, you know, when you, you know, you have to pay for that plane ticket, you have to pay for lodging, you have to sometimes pay for your food, and, and, and no, no offerings are given back to you and so but we freely give because we have freely received from the lord and we freely give <clears throat> but we have built relationships with those people in honduras for 27 years and they are like family to us and we we love them and and the lord has blessed um our travel there and so that's just one example. So. Well, and when we go uh, someplace and minister and have a school or, or teach them or whatever, we're really building relationships. So it's not just about preaching, but it's about building relationships. That's the reason we travel where we go domestically, internationally. It's about building relationships. relationships. And, uh, and we've traveled all over the world. Uh, to, to build relationships. And so we have relationships all over the world. And now uh, during this time of pandemic, of the pandemic that we haven't been able to travel so much, but we've really been active with Zoom meetings. Uh, uh, this, mm -hmm. We may have seven or eight uh, uh, Zoom meetings in a five day period with people all mm -hmm. over the world. Uh, we have meetings regularly with people in Honduras or with uh, Latin America, uh, Europe, uh, those are our friends. Those are the people that we have uh, connected with, that God has connected us with. And so those are the people uh, that, that we build relationships. And even though the pandemic was ongoing, we didn't want our relationships to suffer from that. Right. And so we've reached out uh, over the internet to interact with people. And, and that's been quite successful. And but, but it's building relationships. And so and, and, and even this this session that we have with with you guys on Tuesday evenings has has been a real blessing to us. <clears throat> and that there's been a a reconnection uh, there. And and so we're we're very thankful to the Lord for each one of you and and uh, that you know you're you're just eager to receive the the word of God, and that gives us great joy. So, so the last part of that verse, uh, Luke sixteen verse nine, talks about give generously, and you'll be rewarded. Uh, rewarded 
And, and God is a rewarder. And, and so what you do with your finances are, is important. And I use this as an example, this verse as an example, that it might be something that you'd want to incorporate in your goal of how to, to use finances. You know, a lot of people are just concerned about day-to-day uh, -to -day, uh, continuing on and just getting by this day. And so they go to work and they get up and they go to work and they work until the time they come home and uh, they lay down and then they get up the next morning and, and work again. But you need goals. You need goals. You know, um, Proverbs said, uh, if you don't have goals, you perish. Yeah. Where there are no uh, no, vision. no vision the people very perish so you need a vision and it doesn't matter how young you are um grace or, or sarah it doesn't matter how young you are or, or how far along you are professionally you still need goals and and visions about what uh what your future is going to be and you, you know I, I take for example uh grace is uh has a, has a new job she was excited about if, if Grace begins to save some money, save a little bit of money, uh, then that's going to increase and increase, and it has a compounding uh, effect. So you take a little bit of your money, uh, Grace, and you save it each time, each out of each uh, paycheck, mm -hmm. and that will accumulate, uh, and over the years, you'll see a tremendous increase in your in your wealth. So it's having a goal, having a plan and a vision. God has a plan for you, and and it's good. And mm -hmm. and we know that He's going to be involved in each of your lives uh, because He has a plan, and His plan is going to bring you a future and, and uh, expect it in something good in the end. And that's what we want. We want plans. We want. Uh, each person to have plans on what they want to do with their money, who have a vision uh, for what they want to do. It's not just about uh, getting by uh, day by day. Let, let's have a let's have a higher goal, a goal that that God's word uh, inspires us, and by His mm, by word his and, spirit, yeah. and by His spirit that we're inspired to set some goals and have vision for for the future. Uh, don't let ten years get by. And you mm -hmm. haven't uh, uh, done anything, and you haven't uh, had a goal. And ten years is a is a big component out of a lifetime, and we don't want it wasted. And and it doesn't matter where you are; you can begin today, and and think about what you want for your goal, and think about this uh, particular verse and meditate on it. Uh, and what is it, what will you God give it again? Give it again. Yeah. What will God? Uh, and uh, speak to you out of it. Uh, Luke 16, verse uh, 9 says, Use your money to demonstrate um, your friendship with God mm -hmm. and winning friends and uh, blessing other people. And, and then it says, Your generosity will be rewarded and you will be. Uh, received into eternal dwellings and that's into the presence of God and it is in the presence of your friends and the people that you mm. the people that mm. you win the people that you impact in your life those are the people that you're going to stand with in eternity uh, and and so this is you build that now you, you don't wait till you get into eternity and say well who am I going to stand next to go ahead and build now with the with the friends that God gives you now and so this is this is important. Um, and, and so I want to think then, how can we use finances in a godly lifestyle? And I like the verse Matthew 23, 23, because it's Jesus and Jesus is teaching. And he says, uh, there's these religious people that they're really hung up on tithing. But he said there's some things that are more important than tithing. Ooh, weightier matters. And, and, and he says uh, justice and mercy and faithfulness. So I want to talk about those things. Uh, th those are all more important. We know that tithing is important. He, he, says, tith he says tithing is important, uh, but there's things that are more important than that, but they all fit together. And that's what I want us to see today that the way you use finances uh, is a critical part of your godly lifestyle. 
uh, don't think that it's separate, mm. but it's a it's a critical part. And so justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Let's mm. think about those three terms. Now, justice, there's some other terms that uh, relate to justice, and one is just and judgment. And if we're justified, then we're also made righteous. And so all of those things fit together, just and justified and righteous and righteousness. And so basically, it's just doing the right thing. That's the way I see it. Yeah. I like to simplify things down. And so this is important. In our life, we do what's right. Okay. Now, what might he, mm. what might he think about that? Well, uh, Putting in a full day's work. If you're if you're going to get paid mm. for a full day's work, well, put in a full day's work. Um, and whatever you do, do it unto the Lord with your whole heart. Uh, see, that's real important. Do it with your heart. So the issue is about the heart. It's not all about external things, but doing things right uh, in in your heart. What's in your heart? Um, well, I have an example. It goes along with this. We want to welcome uh, Sophia with us and Lucy with us. Welcome tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. I want to give an example of Freddie brought up um, the workplace and putting in, uh, you know, the, the hours that you're supposed to be working. And I want to just give this example. Um, when um, I was working on my master's degree and we had three small children. Uh, under the age of three and a half, and uh, I was taking classes at the at the University of Georgia, and Brother Fred and I would I would schedule those classes uh, late in the afternoon, and Brother Fred would come home and and watch the children for me so that I could go to uh, my classes, and and then I would come back home. And I would take him back to work, and he would he would put in the 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 eight hours that he uh, was required, you know, to to put in, and sometimes even more than that. But but that was because of of uh, the righteousness of the Lord and wanting to do the the right thing and the just thing, and and I'll never forget that, and. You know, it took me six years to get my master's, but but it was with the help of the Lord and with the help of my husband. Well, our, na our, <laughs> our neighbors thought I had two jobs because I always <laughs> yeah, right. I always uh, left early in the morning, <laughs> and I then I go back in the evening, and I'd be gone for for several hours again. And so it, it was. Uh, a time that was the season we were in right so we need to do what's right and uh, you know there's a there's a verse in uh, uh, Romans chapter 2 verse 26 Romans 2 verse 26 and it talks about a person who doesn't know the law but yet they do what's right in their heart because they have this inner response of what's right it, it's keeping the the requirements mm -hmm. and so that inner response of the heart made that person it was attributed to them as righteousness and that's mm -hmm. what i mean by of the heart keeping that inner response of the heart uh, and, and that's what's doing just uh and righteous uh doing things that are right and uh, then the, the first thing that was uh uh, more important than our finances and, and was very important. Jesus emphasized this called uh, the weightier matters is, is uh, justice. And the second one is mercy. Have mercy on people. Mm -hmm. And of course, we get mercy when we, when, when we give mercy, then we get mercy. And, and so we have to start with that first. We give mercy and God gives us mercy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I like the story about the, the madman of Gadara in uh, Mark chapter five, because um, Jesus delivered a man from a multitude of uh, demons. And then he, uh, the man wanted to go with Jesus. Of course, if I'd mm -hmm. been in mm -hmm. the tombs and uh, the thousand uh, demons and, and just cutting myself and uh, crying out uh, day and night, then, then I would want to go with Jesus too, who had delivered him. But uh, Jesus said, no, go back to your home and tell them about that God has had compassion on you. He's had mercy on you. And 
uh, that is so incredible that he didn't give him a three-year, 12-step uh, uh, discipleship. He just said, <laughs> you've, been, you've been delivered from those demons. God has shown you mercy. Now you go show mercy. Well, isn't that all of us? God's shown mercy, mercy to all on of us. us. We, we are qualified to show mercy to other people. Hallelujah. Tell, Hallelujah. tell them about the mercy that God has uh, shown us that that's really exciting that we're qualified we, we've all received mercy, mercy. And, and then we're qualified to give mercy to other people now the third thing that jesus said is more important than your tithe is faithfulness now that's really interesting because you know that's a fruit of the spirit yes it is it's faithfulness and and there's really two sides of the coin and one is faith and the other side is faithfulness and sometimes in some translation that fruit of the spirit is called faith and others it's called faithfulness uh, so faith is us depending upon the lord and he is faithful and so our faith comes from his faithfulness because he is faithful we we can have faith. Mm. If he's unfaithful, then we have, we have nothing, mm. no faith to stand on. But because he's faithful, our faith can arise um, and oh, on good, the basis right? of his faithfulness. That's and, and then we can produce this fruit of faithfulness. And, and it says that we live by the faith of Jesus Christ. And so it says if you're faithful in little, then you'll be faithful in much. And so we just start where we are. Maybe we don't have much, but let's be faithful in little. And then, then we will grow and cultivate that fruit because it is a fruit of the spirit. And it's by the Holy Spirit. And so we grow in the fruit of the spirit then. Mm -hmm. And that's more important than what you do with your money. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah. Jesus said that. I, I didn't say, say that. that. Jesus said that in Matthew 23, 23, that these are the things that are more important than what you do with your tithe. And, and that is justice and mercy, mercy and faithfulness. faithfulness. And faithfulness is a fruit. Mm -hmm. But now the thing about the fruit of the spirit, if you go to the grocery store, there'll be a section called fruits and vegetables. But in the uh, Galatians, uh, chapter five it says fruit of the spirit mm -hmm. and then it lists several things but what's interesting here they're all tied together and they're all oh, wrapped, wrapped up, up with love yes and so love holds everything together and, and it's called a fruit the fruit of the spirit and so faithfulness is in there so if faithfulness is in there the other fruit are going to be in there too and it's all tied up held together by the love of God. And so those are really the important things. And I, and I talked about if, we, if we're right in our heart and we do the things that are right in our heart, then God looks at the, us and, and, and declares us to be righteous. But there's another verse that goes along with that, and that is James. Uh, it talks about uh, faith without works is dead. dead. So there has to be this corresponding action. So faith, if you have a faith, then there's going to be a corresponding action. And particularly if we're talking about finances, so that's what we're talking about today, that if you have faith, if you believe, then there's going to be some corresponding action of what you do with your money. Uh, and, and that corresponding action, see, is going to be real important. And so if you think about your prayer life, then, then uh, your prayer life, is not over here separate from your actions and particularly what's in your heart. And, and they all tie together. That And that's, the finances are an integral part of your godly lifestyle. And they are also an integral part of your prayer life. See, James 5, 4 says that your money is crying out to God, the commander of all the heavenly forces he your money is crying out and so it, it it's important what we do with our money because God's listening to your money what you do with your money and God's looking at your heart he's not just looking at your external things mm -hmm. uh, remember those uh, uh Pharisees and, and uh, religious people that threw in a lot of money uh that didn't impress Jesus it just didn't he, he's looking there uh, and seeing them throw in money, but it didn't 
it didn't uh, impress him. What impresses him is what's in your heart. What's in your heart. And, and so we, we make this inner response in our heart, and God counts that as righteousness. And, and we have these corresponding actions of what we believe, what our faith is, and, and we do that and inspire our heart. What's in our heart? Uh, it says uh, in 2 Corinthians 9, give as you purpose in your heart. Okay, so these are real important things, and it will affect your prayer life. If you have, if you're praying over here, you want something, and, and your money is not in correspondence you know, as a corresponding act of what you're praying for, uh, then then your prayers are just standing alone. But God's looking at your at your listening to your finances as well, mm -hmm. and, and so we need to have corresponding action. So where's our faith? And we ought to be putting something with our faith and how we spend our money and what we spend our money on. Uh, it needs to be with integrity. It, it needs to be uh, righteous mm -hmm. and it needs to show mercy to other people. So we need to be operating in all of these because your finances are not in isolation of your godly lifestyle. It all fits together. Yes. And that that's real important that they, all of these things uh, fit together. And so you can use your finances in such a way to hinder your prayers, or you could use mm, your, your mm, finances mm. in such a way to uh, uh, expediate your prayers and, and, and make mm. things work in your prayer life. Hallelujah. So, so I don't think that what you do with your money is not going to be important to your prayer life or important to your godly life. It all fits together. together. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't want to be doing something with your finances that's going to negate uh, what you're doing in your, in your lifestyle and in your prayer life. You, you don't want to be asking for something for God to prosper you and you, and you not use the money in such a way that there will be rewards and there will be a reaping of a harvest. So all of that has to fit together. Mm -hmm. now, that's that's real important. Uh, it, this is a, a a message about integration of of these different of these different concepts. Now I want to talk about tithing. Uh, what did Jesus say about the tithing? You ought to do it. It is important. Yeah. But there are more. There are other things that are more important. He said. But tithing is important, and you ought to tithe. Okay, so let's go to Hebrews chapter 7, and this is about Abraham and Melchizedek. Uh, this came out of uh, Genesis. It was a repeat. Now, if you see uh, something repeated in the Bible, that makes it doubly important. And, and so in the Old Testament, we saw this story, and now we're seeing it played out in the New Testament. That means it's a double uh, of double importance. It's very important. And, and this is what I... What I saw in this, what the Holy Spirit revealed to me in Hebrews chapter seven, uh, see in, in Genesis I had been I, I had been wanting to look at Melchizedek and think about well, who is he and where did he come from and all of those well, where's he going to be and all of those kinds of questions. But but the Holy Spirit, as I was reading in Hebrews seven years ago, Holy Spirit has said the one I need to look at here is Abraham because he's the father of, of my faith, faith. And, and so I need to be following Abraham. So. I just put Melchizedek on the on the burner there on the side. And I said, well, that's not as important for me to know all those details about him. What is important is for me to look at Abraham, see what he did, and follow Abraham because he's the father of my faith. And I'm going to walk in his footsteps. Uh, and, and there tithing is. There it is. And the thing that's interesting here is that um, Abraham tithe to an individual, somebody that was close to him. Uh, they were so close that when Abraham went out to battle, uh, he had informed uh, Melchizedek, either by naturally or spiritually, but Melchizedek came and met him and brought supplies to him uh, on his way from the battle. And, and so they had a relationship. I see that as a relationship, mm -hmm. and that's who he tithed to. Now, a story uh, from uh, Sherry and my uh, background is when we were young, we had uh, uh, looked and visited some different congregations, and we found one where we really liked the preacher, and, and so we were there, 
uh, uh, following him and, and listening to him teach. And he, was, he got up one day and said, I'm going to teach about faith for a long time, uh, about faith. I'm going to do a series on faith. Okay. And, uh, and then he went on vacation and the congregation the elders in the in the group they evidently they didn't like faith and so they fired him while he was on vacation and yet they <laughs> were still wanted us to give money to them and what i found out is i didn't have a relationship with any of those people and they wanted me to give money and tithe and offerings to an institution uh and mm -hmm. the, and the person i had a connection with uh they fired, they fired him <laughs> and so that, that just wasn't a good situation. Well, but what I see with Abraham, he gave money to who he had a relationship with. And, and that's really important. So it's not about an institution here, but it's important about relationships. And who do you have relationships uh, with? And so, yes, uh, that uh, tithing is still in the New Testament. Yeah, I know a lot of people say, well, it's not in the New Testament. Well, there it is. Mm -hmm. Have you ever read Hebrews 7? Have you ever read Matthew 23? Uh, that It's there. Tithing is in the New Testament. It's a different situation. It's a different situation than in the Old Testament. Uh, tithing was really important in the Old Testament because of the curse. If you don't if you don't if you don't, don't tithe, tithe, then you're then going you're to be under a curse. curse. So that was real important. But now Jesus has delivered us from the curse. Amen. So, so what we do now is we we do what's in our heart, and what's and and God in our heart. And what we purpose in our heart, and God rewards us when we perp when we do what we purpose in our heart, not what would please man. And not what uh, people are putting pressure on us to do, but what pleases God. Amen. Find out by the Spirit of God what pleases Him and give as you purpose in your heart and be led by the Spirit of God because finances in the New Testament flow by the Spirit. Spirit. So follow the Spirit, give where the Spirit says to give. And as the Spirit says to give, it's not about rules and regulations. No. Jesus delivered us from uh, uh, rules and regulations. It's not about ceremonies and rituals. It, it's about relationships with our Heavenly Father and with His Son and with His Holy Spirit. Build relationships and build relationships on the earth with people. Uh, it, it's not about institution. You can't have a relationship with the institution even though people want to uh, tell you you can you, you can't your relationships that are going to matter in eternity the people that are going to welcome you into the eternal dwelling and to the eternal presence of the lord are those people that you build a relationship with here and i guarantee no institution is going to make it up there it's going to be people it's going to be people who are washed in the blood of hallelujah, the Lamb hallelujah. and born again. Hallelujah. Amen. Be your relationship with those people who lift up Jesus Christ. Okay, hallelujah. so what, what are we told to do then in the New Testament? Well, I like to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, oh. verses 6 and 7. It says, if you sow sparingly, mm -hmm. you're going to reap sparingly. But if you sow so bountifully, bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. Bountiful. You'll reap bountifully. And so that's real important. So that's what it is. And, and it says, as you purpose in your heart. So what we're expected to do in the New Testament is to give generously. Give generously so that you can win friends and that you can bless people and glorify God. These are the things that, that we need to do. And it's important. And everything you do, do it all with your heart, mm -hmm. with all of your heart, and do it to glorify God. These are the things we're expected to do, and we're expected to be have a generous attitude with our with our finances and give generously. Mm -hmm. And that's important. And we're going to be rewarded for it. This is not like throwing it into a a, a hole in the ground. This is where you're going to be planting. And you're going to see uh, uh, a reward and a harvest come forth. And that's what the finances are used for in a godly lifestyle. And, and they're going to be integrated with your whole being and every part of you. And, and, and it's going to, your finances are going to be to reinforce your prayer life and, and the other things that you do. And you're going to live uh, justly and, and uh, show mercy and be faithful, and that means you're dependable, 
uh, on what God is telling you to do. You're de dependent, dependent on him and dependable. And you've got character within you. That's all at the heart level. And he's blessing you exceedingly abundantly, even more than you can ask or think Thanks. when you're doing what God Amen. Amen. leads you to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.